ladies and gentlemen, to another round of the Sky Sports F1 quiz. And not since Wang first walked into the University Channel studio has there been such anticipation about a quiz show. Yes, the heavyweights of Sky F1 are with us. So much brain power on show today. Martin Brundle, Ted Kravitz and Natalie Pink can welcome along to the cavalcade of quizziness. How are we, Ted? Crafty. Nervous? Hello, who's who's Bobby Seagull in this uh, in this lineup? Can I be Bobby? Ah, <laughs> uh, Nats can be Bobby Seagull. Definitely. Have you been watching University Challenge, Nats, in preparation for this? Negative, Ghost Rider. Martin, uh, how's your research? Uh, been? Yeah, I saw the final. I thought it was really good. Um, you said you would send me, as we're teammates up in the com box, a few question and answers in advance. Haven't received them, Crofty. What is yeah. going on? Email's been a bit bad. We're trying to homeschool here. We're, we're oh, bandwidth. You are better a bit than that, Martin. You are better <laughs> than that. I, however, I'm not. <laughs> just watch, just listen to the intonation on the voice, Martin. You'll be absolutely fine. Uh, okay. um, for those that haven't joined us before and for our quiz mates uh, together, there are four cunning rounds to, uh, to show your knowledge and expertise. Uh, you have a specialist subject that you've given me that we'll start off with. We have a general F1 uh, round. We have a round all about your Sky Sports F1 teammates where you answer questions about each other and you get to pick a topic to choose from for the final round that it's double points. Bernie Eccleston thought that was a great idea. I am carrying on in Bernie's tradition of having double Double points for the final round. Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. yes. As ready as we'll ever be. <laughs> Love it. Nat, should we start off with your specialist oh, subject? Oh, really? Oh, oh I'm going first. I feel really nervous. Okay, go on. <clears throat> your specialist subject, Nat, London 2012. Yes. Not the Olympics, just being in London in 2012. It's great. <laughs> well, I've done it about the Olympics, Nat. Uh, which member of the royal family, and if Nats gets this wrong, guys, A, I'd be stunned, and B, you get the chance to, uh, to steal by putting your hand up. Which member of the royal family won a silver medal at the 2012 Olympic Games? Zara Phillips. I was there. Absolutely. Has she, have you seen the medal up close and personal? I have, yes. I was there cheering her along, and she did it with William Fox Pitt, Mary King... Uh, Tina Cook and Nicola. Nicola, what was Nicola's son? Anyway, was that a great bonus points? Bonus a, points there, surely. This is the Natalie Pink and Martin that gives me, I don't know anything, I'm not very mm. clever, and now goes on to list the entire eventing team. Very good. Like that, Nat. So tell me this one then who won tennis gold at London 2012? Ooh. In the men's oh, singles. Andy, Andy Murray. Andy Murray beat Novak Djokovic in the final, 7-5-7-5. Uh, right, Grenada's Kirani James won the men's 400 metres gold at London 2012. But what was so special about his achievement? Was it the first ever gold medal for Grenada? Did he break the world record by two seconds? Or did he win after tripping over? It was the first, it was the, oh, yeah, it was the first gold medal for Grenada. It was the first gold medal for Grenada, one of seven countries at London 2012 to win their first medal in the Olympic Games. Who announced his retirement from Olympic competition following uh, their performance in the 4x100 metre relay medley? They also changed their mind and swam again in Rio. Uh, but was it Missy Franklin, Michael Phelps or Adam Peaty? So Missy and Michael Phelps both got... A record. So sorry, what was the question? Who retired? Who announced their retirement from Olympic competition? Following it was their Michael Phelps with 20 Olympic medals to his name, the world record. It was definitely Michael Phelps uh, who uh, won a record 23 Olympic golds uh, by that stage. I think was it 28 in the end that he won? He so in, in Rio. That was very good. Nat, you know your stuff. In what races did Mo Farah win gold for Team GB? So this was on Super Saturday when... Um, well, they weren't both, both on Super Saturday. No, no, so he won one on Super Saturday with Greg Rutherford and Jessica Ennis-Hill. She knows the stuff. 3,000 and the 10,000. Oh, so close, but not right, I'm afraid. I can offer that out. 5, Don't start, Nats, you've got it wrong. Uh, Martin said, hand up, please. Which races? To two races did Mo Farah win gold for Team GB? Hands up if you know. Martin. 
Uh, 5,000 meters. And? And the 10,000. 10,000 meters. That is absolutely correct, Martin. I didn't hear Ted when he butted in there. So, uh, well, I was just yeah, taking have got my time. Yeah, we all work together. Come on. Give Martin <laughs> some points. That is a very good four out of five. Natalie Pinkham, well done to you. Thanks. Turn to Martin Brundle, whose specialist subject is Le Mans in the 1990s. He knows it. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I emailed you Le Mans. <laughs> in Le Mans 24 hours, not in the 1990s. I mean, 26th of May 1923, Lagash and Leonard win. The, I've, I've spent hours on this, and you suddenly go, it's the 1990s. Your email said, I don't know, Le Mans or Summit was what you put down. <laughs> I'd have gone for Summit. <laughs> <laughs> so I've given you Le Mans in the 1990s. Tell me this, okay. who are the two Mercedes drivers whose cars flipped in the air during the 1999 Le Mans week? Mark Webber and Peter Dumbreck. That is the correct answer. Who was the first Finnish driver to win Le Mans? Was it Keke Rosberg or JJ Leto? Uh, has Keki won them all? Is I'm going to go J JJ Leto. JJ Leto is the correct answer, driving a McLaren F1 in 1995, along with uh, Masanori uh, Sakaya, who was the first Japanese driver to win Le Mans that yeah. same year. Uh, how did the FIA reduce speeds at the 1990 Le Mans? Well, they put two chicanes in the six kilometre long Mulsanne Strait. Uh, reducing speeds from 400 kilometers per hour to 320 kilometers per hour and uh, three Herberts in a Jaguar won the race including me. Exactly, uh, way more information there but it was the Mulsanne straight that I wanted, thank you very much. Uh, which manufacturer filled the top three finishing positions in the 1993 Le Mans? Oof. So Porsche, Porsche was in the 80s, 93 Le Mans. 93 Le Mans. Oh my goodness me, I should know that one. Wasn't that the Jags? Um, Ted, no, ja ja Jags were 88 and 90. And then we went into the early 90s, which was, um, it wasn't the Audi time. I'm going to say Peugeot. Oh, magnificent answer. And their team boss was? Jean Todt. Jean Todt, correct. Tom Christensen took his first Le Mans victory in 1997. How many times has the King of Le Mans won the 24-hour race? Tom Christensen has won Le Mans nine times. Incredibly, absolutely extraordinary achievement, that is. Good guy, should have been in Formula One. One of the, one of the drivers you definitely put on the list of who never got a chance in Formula One, who should have done. Couldn't agree more. Five out of five, Martin Brundle, ladies and gentlemen, for his Thank specialist you. subject. A couple of lucky guesses. You, you didn't need the other years. 90s was where it was at. <laughs> and Ted Kravitz, I love your specialist subject, because um, we all know Ted likes an aeroplane, or five. Um, so Ted's specialist subject is airline tail fin logos. Of the world of the world. So if I describe How the- How many are in operation at the moment? <laughs> oh, well. Sadly, not many. Um, Ted, if I describe it, you just have to tell me uh, the name of the airline, please. What, you're describing it? Isn't this a picture around? Yeah, but I'm a commentator, so I don't do pictures, I just do talking, yeah? Oh, okay. Ooh, tough. There's Ooh, no tough, Ted, that is. No illustrations, right. you have to use your imagination. Oh, okay. Uh, so, a blue rectangle, Underneath four blue circles, underneath a blue cross. A blue rectangle. Underneath four blue circles, underneath a blue cross. It's KLM, isn't it? It is KLM. Oh, good one. Okay. Right. Um, I, I know you frequent Schiphol uh, quite a lot. Schiphol. Yep. Marvelous airport. Okay. Um, Horus, the sky deity. Usually depicted as a falcon or a man with the head of a falcon. Uh, Horus is Egypt Air. <laughs> Unbelievable. How do you know that? Because <laughs> it's an Egyptian, it's an Egyptian thing, isn't it, Horus? 
Okay. It's an Egyptian. It's an Egyptian god. You see it, you know, with the pharaohs and Cairo and the pyramids and everything. Egypt, isn't it? And his mummy and all that. And Polani or Pualani, the island girl with a hibiscus in her hair. Uh, the Hawaiian Star of the sky. Hawaiian airline. Hawaiian Airlines. That's a bit easy, that one, isn't it? You say a Hawaiian-sounding <laughs> name, you might as well say Moana. <laughs> All right, go on. <laughs> Disney would let her have that one. And the crane, a symbol of long life, prosperity, and good health. Ciao. It is Japanese Airlines. Very good, very good. And um, the wild goose, the world's highest flying bird. A wild goose. Yeah, but you've chosen ones, you know, uh, pictures of birds on airline tail fins are probably 90% of them. Um, there was loads of them. I mean, Lufthansa's got a bird. I don't, yeah. That's a condor. Yeah, so it's not this was a though. goose. The wild goose, the world's highest flying bird. Uh, what's got a goose on it? Um, Dinner it table? Sorry? <laughs> no, um, sorry, I thought you were asking me the questions now. Come on, that's pretty difficult. Is it on a? Can you give me a clue? Is it on a circle or just a plain, a plain? Uh, it's 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 the wild goose. Uh, is it on a circle? I, don't, I, I think it is. Um, the wild goose, by the way, can rise up to twenty nine thousand feet. Hence, they've used the wild goose wow. as their uh, their uh, well, tail logo. You, you Turkish has got these. Turkish has got a bird on a circle on a red background. Yes. So I'm going to go with Turkish Airlines. Yeah, you see, it's like a Friday night. After 11 o'clock, you leave the bar, right. what do you plump for? Turkish. Yeah. It's not a kebab, it's a wild goose. Congratulations, Ted yeah. Gravitt. Oh, well done, Ted. I didn't get a thing. Excellent. The um, goose one was difficult, actually. Yeah, so, um, a very competitive, I told you this was heavyweights today. Martin Brundle and Ted Kravitz, both with 100% so far. Natalie, four out of five, you will come good. Don't we? Oh, actually, Martin's got six. I've just checked the scores because you've got the one right. So, Martin, six, Ted, five. Nat's four. Hang on, why does he get six? He got one of yours, the Mo Farrell one. Oh, you're right, he did. <laughs> As they say, Nat's in late night television. Yeah, we'll bleep that one out. It's not a problem. Next qu uh, next round, F1 round. Now, I am expecting... I'm screwed now, aren't I? I'm expecting properly good answers here. Um... Uh, for and what do we do? Question, we have to put our hand up. We have to put our hand up, do yeah. we? Or shout our name? Uh, we'll shout your name out. But for this first question, I'm actually going to let you all answer this one because it's because uh, I'm after a number. So you all get a chance to answer this one. The German Grand Prix in 2019 was a chaotic affair. Seven drivers retiring and plenty of pit stops. Drivers switching from wet to dry to intermediate to dry to wet, etc. But according to Pirelli, how many different sets of tyres were used in this race? That sets of tyres are one, not the total amount of tyres. So you all get a go on this one. Nat. You no, go. I think Ted can go. Actually, Martin should go first because he was leading from the last round. Okay, yeah, Martin first. We've and then just I'm just going to choose one, one less than his. <laughs> we've just watched this back, Martin, with Max and Christian. Yeah, we did. I I wasn't Didn't counting mention. the tyres. I, I do remember pointing out that at one point, uh, the field were on intermediate, wet, uh, no, medium, soft and intermediate tyres. Yeah. Three different tyres at the same time out on the track. So Perez spun off on the first uh, very early doors and then we lost another, I think Lando Norris had an issue. So most people pitted four times. The winner pitted five times. Um, others crashed. I'm going to go for 70. 70, says Martin Brundle. Ted Kravitz. It's not fair going first. So this is sets of tyres. Yes. So I seem the to race. remember there was something like 40, uh, there was something like 40 pit stops um, or 47 pit stops. That number sticks in my brain. So um, that would be sets of tyres. I'm going to, uh, no, I think it's higher than that. What did you say? 70, know. Martin? There, there I said 70. 70. I'm going to go with... Um, said there weren't 47 pit stops. There were more than 47 pit stops. I, right. I, I don't want you to go down a blind cul-de-sac on this one. No, because I was going to double it. I'm going to say um, sets of tyres. I'm going to say 91. And Natalie Pinkham. 
I'm going to say 92. <laughs> <laughs> By virtue of the fact that Nats went last and waited for everyone else's answers, she gets the point. 97 sets. Wow. Of tyres. 78 pit stops in total. Um, in the Belgian Grand Prix, this time, shout your name out. In the Belgian Grand Prix last year, who had an engine issue on the final lap that cost him a career? Natalie, Pinky, London, London Norris. Norris is the correct uh -huh. answer. Well done, Pinky. Uh, How um, many British drivers have been world champion? Whatever. Martin. No, ten. Yes, that's uh, Martin. Martin. Ten. Ten is the correct answer. Um, Hawthorne, Hill, Clark, Surtees, Stewart, Hunt, Mansell, Hill, Button, Hamilton. How many British drivers have won the British Grand Prix? Martin. Martin. Not a clue, but I'm going to say, so you've got Herbert, Coulthard, Hamilton, Hill, Stewart, Clark. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, eight. <laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. Right, we'll tr try again then, Nat. Nine. Right. <laughs> Someone try again. Ten. Seven. Sorry? Seven. Seven, no, twelve. Oh. oh. Moss and Brooks, they both get the win because they share the car. Mm. Collins, mm, Clark, Stewart, true. Hunt, Watson. Mansell, Hill, Herbert, Coulthard, and Hamilton. Wassy, we forgot Wassy. Yeah. yeah. Wassy? No uh, one forgets Wassy. No one forgets Wassy in a hurry. Hello, Wassy. Uh, the Singapore Grand Prix was Ferrari's first and only 1 2 finish of the 2019 season. Sebastian Vettel won the race, but where did he start? Martin, uh, third. Yes, that is correct. Nat, when you put your hand up, you've got to shout your name out as well. Sorry. sorry. But did, were you going to say third? I was, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Martin got the point, sadly. You know, that's that's where the whole commentary duo thing comes in handy, Martin. Yeah, uh, it is. Well, I've got delay here. I want the FIA to investigate this, to be honest, because I'm in Norfolk. These two are in London with all the super duper Wi-Fi. I think I've got at least three tenths of a delay here, anyway. <laughs> it's a, no, that, that is way less of a delay in my brain, so don't worry about it. <laughs> How many laps? Did Daniel Ricciardo lead on his way to his first F1 win in Canada in 2014? How many Martin. laps? Martin? One. Not right. Ted. Ted. Uh, five. No, somewhere in the middle of that, Nats, is the answer. <laughs> oh, three. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> it's correct. I mean, um, <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen's win in Austin in 2018 was his first Grand Prix win in how many races? And I did say Pinky. as he crossed the line, Pinky. He last won in Abu Dhabi in 2012. Right, you're back. Right, yeah. okay. Oh, that's um, seven years. In how many races, Nats? Oh, right. Oh, Oh, do I have to work this well, out? Once again, Nats, there's a high chance this, this show's going out before the watershed. I'm such a potty mouth. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll have a go. I'll have a go. Go on then. I seem to remember it was something like 95 races, wasn't it? It I was something it was... like that, but it wasn't 95. No. No. It was more. So 20 times 7, 140. Yeah, it's not as many as that. Uh, I'm going to, Martin, I'm going to say 123. Close. 113 races was the correct answer there. Do I get a point for that? Sadly not, no. Um, I, I can't, you were 10 out, I can't give you a point for 10 oh. out. That's, you, you're better than that, Martin. You don't need a point for that. Clearly not. Um, right. Uh, next question. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know this was on this sheet. This is going to be fun. A bout of chicken pox stopped Nigel Mansell driving in the 1988 Belgian Grand Prix. Which driver replaced him? Martin. Martin? Me. No, not Martin. That's the wrong answer. No, actually, it is the right answer. It was Martin Brundle. <laughs> That's not fair, is it? <laughs> yeah, but and you know Jean -Louis, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah, Jean Louis, Jean -Louis Schlesser um, replaced uh, him at the next round and then tripped over it in Senna <laughs> uh, and stopped McLaren winning every race. Fantastic. I love the way, though, that your hand went up a fraction of a second before Ted on that one. I was going to say Thierry Bootson. 
<laughs> stock answer for any F1 well, quiz. I'd, I'd already got the answer right by just putting my hand up and shouting my name, hadn't I? So. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, that, that, that doesn't seem fair. But I didn't know it was on there. I actually hadn't read the questions in advance. That's well, fine, that's since, fair. Since yesterday. Try this one then. Which driver in Singapore last year became the first from outside the top three teams to lead a Grand Prix since Pinky. Massa and Bottas? Pinky? Uh, Perez. Not right. Since Massa and Bottas for Williams in 2015. It was Ted. You didn't say your name, but as you haven't given us a correct answer in this round, I'm going to give you the point oh, anyway. Thank you very much. Well done, Ted. Well, no problem. It was Antonio Giovinazzi. Um, Lewis Hamilton won the 2019 Russian Grand Prix, but which record did he beat in the process? Um, Martin. Martin. Highest number of, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Grand, Grand Chelems. Yeah, um, Grand Chelems. Oh, fastest lap, win, never, never lead every lap. Uh, not quite. I think. Oh, um, highest still a, point scorer. Still get that. Sorry, say that again, Ted. Point scorer. Nope. Does it mean I get a free go? Yes, you do that. Go on. Um, is it the amount of times... What's the question again? <laughs> what record did Lewis beat in... Lewis Hamilton won the 2019 Russian Grand Prix, but which record did he beat in the process? Um... Laps led? You, you were close, but I can't... What? No, it's the, it's the total amount of races led, not laps led. Um, there was his 143rd race that he led, beating Michael Schumacher's record. I'd like to give you that, but... No, you wouldn't. I think you're right. No, I can't, because it wasn't right. So that gives us, after two rounds, ladies and gentlemen, the score of Ted Kravitz, a magnificent uh, six. Natalie Pinkham, a stunning seven. Martin Brundle, out on his own with nine. Congratulations, very good. Come on, guys, I've got a busy week. I don't want to be going into the semis. Come on, Ted. <laughs> oh, what have you got you know, on? Competitive <laughs> spirit just gets you. <laughs> it's, it, is, it is so rare I hear Martin Brundle say that's, that phrase. I don't want to go into the semis, but we're hearing it today. <laughs> uh, you're straight through to the final if you win this one, so don't you oh, worry. Oh, my and, goodness. Oh, that's and, all right, then. Right, well, come next. on, guys. Nat, we're going to go with you first because we move on to the how well do you know your Sky Sports teammates, yeah? yeah. And your questions are all about Ted Kravitz. Oh, my favourite subject. This should have been my specialist subject. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the half of it. And you'll love it. <laughs> so question number one. Ted started his broadcasting career doing what? Did he read the football scores on BBC Devon? Did he read the traffic news for AA Roadwatch? Or did he present a junior request show on hospital radio? Where did Ted Kravitz start his broadcasting career? What was the first option? Uh, reading the football scores on BBC Devon. No. Traffic news for AA Roadwatch. Yeah, it was the traffic news. Ted Kravitz. Ted Kravitz, AA Roadwatch. It was. <laughs> hey! He did. He was a traffic man. Tamar Bri the Tamer Bridge, I tell you. Always. Backed up on the Tamer Bridge. And don't pronounce it Tamar Bridge. It's not the Tamar Bridge. It's the Tamara Bridge. The what? The ta Tamara Tamara? Tamara Bridge. The Tamara is Bernie Eccleston's daughter. That's not a bridge. Linking. Oh. Uh, yeah. anyway. <laughs> right. Natalie, question number two. I love this. Ted has a birthmark on the sole of his right foot <laughs> in the shape of Silverstone, the Nordschleife, or Stonehenge. I think it's the Nordschleife. <laughs> Why do you think it's the Nordschleife? Because that's a quite a good moly type shape. <laughs> Not hey. a mole, it's just a red patch. <laughs> Martin. Can we steal? No. It's, 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 gotta be, it's gotta be Stonehenge, hasn't it? From <laughs> some dodgy sandals or something at some point. It, how could it be look like, it can't be the Nordschleife. That's got 132 corners. Ted Kravitz, can we reveal your foot? No, absolutely not, because uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be good viewing for everybody. But do you want me to tell you who the answer on. is? Yeah, it go on. Exactly. Have on from the waist down. That's why I can't lift his leg up. <laughs> no, it's um, yeah, I'm naked. I'm not wearing any trousers. <laughs> I'm only wearing my pants. Um, it is, it is the Nordschleife. <laughs> it's the Nordschleife. <laughs> It's that, that sort of roundy bit, and then it's got just a yeah. bit at the end, yeah. 
I seem to remember after a few drinks on a plane on the way home, you showing it to me. <laughs> Stonehenge would be, surely, would be like that, Crofty. I've never seen a, never yeah. seen a birthmark like that. I anyway, just, yes. I good. took my inspiration from Spinal Tap for that one. But you, yeah. honestly, you were destined for a career in motorsports with a birthmark the shape of a north slide. It's all of my right <laughs> foot. Oh dear. Question number three, Nats, and you're doing really well in this round. What happened to Ted's first car? Uh, after many thousands of, uh, thousands of miles of happy motoring, he sold it to a rabbi and his wife. He still has it. Or he crashed it into some railings, having picked up some understeer in the wet. I think he's still got it. His first car? I mean, that, that, that would make that car about 25 years old. I think he does. Ted? Um, I've got three kids, Nat, so I wouldn't fit anything into the Peugeot 106. Uh, I did, in fact, crash it into some railings off the Essex Road, having picked up some understeer in the wet. Oh. <laughs> I see you as something of a hoarder, so I could just imagine it tucked away in one yeah. of the properties <laughs> around the world. <laughs> no, sadly, I had a few since then. But, uh, yeah, the 106 never had the handling characteristics of the Peugeot 205, which was the classic one of, the, uh, of my era. Certainly not after it hit the railings anyway. No, no. Um, never want to shy away from asking the tough questions. Uh, which driver once belly punched Ted? Uh, was it Nick Heidfeld, Ralph Schumacher, or Adrian Soutil? Oh, all three. <laughs> I say something really naughty. <laughs> <I'm not going> to... <laughs> Come on, that's Daddy Pinkham. <laughs> which driver? <laughs> Wants belly punch Ted. I don't know why any of these three are funny, Matt. I really don't. Because <laughs> one of them actually punched Ted once. And that is not funny and not to be tried at home, children. <laughs> but we're all giggling now. Was it Nick Heidfeld, Ralph Schumacher, or Adrian Sutil? See, I can't see any of them doing it, but I'm probably going to... I'm saying it's probably more of a tickle than a punch. <laughs> Like a, you know, proper. Okay, I'm going to go Heidfeld. Nick Heidfeld. He couldn't reach Ted's belly. Nick Heidfeld's only about two foot. <laughs> okay, sure. Schumacher. The most mild-mannered driver in recent <laughs> yes, history, yes. Nick Heidfeld, who would never. I wouldn't say boo. I wouldn't say boo to you. Let him punch you. It was more of a little tickle, tickly of the tum. Little. Yeah. It's got to be subtle. I've seen Sutil when he's had a drink or two. It's got to be Adrian <laughs> Sutil. Ted? Oh, exactly. yeah, no, hang on. Yeah, no, that's probably... Yeah. That's probably no, it was, that one, it it yeah. was indeed that's Ralph Schumacher. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I can't remember what it was. It was... Uh, well, I asked him something cheeky, I think. And... Uh, he did the old. He did the old switcheroo. He said, ha, 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 and then went, like that. <laughs> but, you know, we had, a, we, had a, we had a little rough and tumble. We had a wrestle on the ground and... Um, oh really got to grips with each other. And after that, it was fun. How lovely. Yep. There you go. And, and finally, and he sent me this question, so I've just asked it. How many uh, Grand Prix has Ted Kravitz won? How one. Many it, how many Grand Prix has Ted Kravitz won? So this is a trick question. It's a question, Nats. Do I get multiple choice? Nope. How many Grand Prix? So, can, I asked you for five facts, and you all gave me five facts. And one of Ted Kravitz's facts was how many Grand Prix he'd won. So, how many Grand Prix has Ted Kravitz won? I don't, I've no idea. Well, I don't know what this means. I, you know, I'm flummoxed. You're flummoxed by by right. Look at him. Yes. Just look at the man None. and his stature. None. 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 Zero. None. Zero. Ted. Yeah, that's correct. I'm a reporter. <laughs> I'm not a racing driver. So, uh, yeah, I haven't won any. Easy point. Thanks very much. Yeah, good. Oh, Thank you very much. Easy point. At what stage, though? What I'm interested in. At what stage did it cross your mind that he might have won a Grand Prix at some stage in his life? Oh, it might well, have yeah, been. but like t Tiddlywinks. Might yeah. have been Tiddlywinks, Pinky or something. Yeah, Are we still doing the quiz or have we stopped the quiz now? I know, we're we, still... <laughs> <laughs> we are still quizzing. Trust me. <laughs> This, this is what they call entertainment these days, Martin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but, right. yeah it, could, it could have been. I don't know. I guess it could have been, yeah. Uh, it could I, have been the Sega, yeah. the Sega Games Grand Prix or yeah, the Grand Prix, yeah. Yeah. the King's Cross Wings Raceway. Or, yeah, it or, down. But it wasn't. No. It was zero. So, zero. Ted Kravitz, we move on to you. How well do you know Martin Brundle? Okay. 
Right, how many O-levels did Martin pass? Um, O-levels, by the way, for those watching who don't know what an O-level is, were the exams that we took before GCSEs, which were much harder. Uh, did Martin uh, pass 12, 9 or 6 O-levels? Um, I'm going to go with 6, just as a guess. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, did less than, you did less than your day. <laughs> is it 9? <laughs> what was the answer? Nine. Uh, I took 14 and passed 12. 12? Yeah, yeah, seriously. No one does 12 O-levels, surely. He did. I we did. Nine, I didn't think, we? I did 10 at school, then I did some more uh, te at college. Technical college. Which, so do you like know? law. I did law, economics. Blimey. Um, yeah, what, what was the other one? Statistics, all sorts, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I got nine at school and three at college. Didn't do drama. But thanks for thinking. Thanks for assuming I'm a bit thick, Ted. I appreciate it. I assumed you had uh, a busy <laughs> race. Right. Um, which side of a single seater car did Martin used to get in from? The right left. or the left? Left. Why Martin was at the left hand side? That is correct, Ted. Um, well, that was a good 50 50. Um, <laughs> because then uh, it was a little bit, you know. A little bit weird, but if you're getting in, always getting from one side, then your mechanics the other side holding the lap straps and making sure your shoulder. So he knows which side of the car you're gonna you're gonna get in. If you get in different sides, he's uh, your mechanics never gonna know where to be. So a little bit of superstition there as well. Question number three: Martin made history at Monza in 1991 for what reason? Did he finish first and second in the same race? Did he lap every other car in the field, or did he win the race but finish on three wheels after a shunt exiting the Parabolica for the final time? Martin um, Brundle made history for what reason? Uh, well, I don't think the last one would have been history because probably other people have done that. So I'm going to say the uh, second. The second. What was the lap every other car in the field? Yeah. No. Martin? Uh, no, I finished first and second in the same race because I was subbing in the uh, mm. Jaguar team and it was Warwick in one car, uh, Tio Fabi in the other. And I used to drive. I'd get in both cars uh, and we, had, we finished first and second. Okay. So I stood out. I had a one foot on each, po each part of the podium. Very good. Yep. The only man who could tell Rod Dennis to his face, yes, that day I was first and the losers. <laughs> um, Martin is, the, uh, is one of the most honest men, men you'll ever meet. We know that. But he does admit to telling one little fib when he was a youngster. So did Martin lie about his age to take a girlfriend to see Lawrence of Arabia at the cinema? Did he lie about his age to get his driving license two years early? Or did he lie about his age to race in a series that he wasn't old enough to take part in? Uh, it's the, the only last, fib he's ever told. The last one. <laughs> well, I, I never saw him as a Lawrence of Arabia fan, so that was a bit of a red herring. But uh, herring, yes, but it was. Uh, you lied about a, uh, your age to get to a race series. Quite right. Uh, I did, yeah, because I was um, about four miles up the road from where I'm sitting now. I was doing grass track racing, and I won the race. And a guy was upset that I'd won the race, and he came after me with a crowbar. Uh, having smashed my car up as I went round on the victory lap with my Ford Anglia. He came along with his Ford Zephyr 6 and wrote me off and then came after me with a crowbar. And my dad said, we're not coming racing here anymore. So the only way to move up to Speedworth Hot Rod Racing was to fib that I was 16. <laughs> so there we were. And try and It was a crowbar what done it. Wow. <laughs> and try and grow a moustache as quickly as he possibly could. Uh, which two musical instruments did Martin learn as a youngster? Was it the uh, piano and the flute? Was it the piano and the guitar? Or was it the trumpet and the panpipes? <laughs> uh, piano and the flute. <laughs> no? I never see Martin as a flautist. I really don't. <laughs> Martin? Uh, the p my mum made me learn the piano and the guitar. Guitar. Okay. Middle C near the lock, you know, near the lock and all that sort of thing. But um, I'm not a musical person, as you know well. I can dance very well when I'm drunk. 
But That's other than that, I don't have any musical talents whatsoever. But I did learn those two instruments. Very good. Magnificent. Uh, right, Ted, um, well done, of sorts, on that one. It brings Brilliant. us to Natalie. Natalie Pinkham, how well... Uh, sorry. No, it's me now, Martin, isn't it? Martin Brundle. I get confused with this. Martin Brundle, how well do you know Natalie Pinkham? Just give me a nod, Pinky, like, like a little... So, first question, and these are all true facts. Uh, these questions. Uh, we, uh, we often see the incredibly bendy Natalie Pinkham displaying her gymnastic skills on social media, but which of the following facts is actually true? Uh, Natalie can balance the Bible on her head whilst doing the splits. Natalie can do 100 one-handed press-ups without stopping, or Natalie can walk on her hands and put her legs behind her head. She's a very bendy person. We often see her on social media being very athletic in her astroturf girl. Yeah, but I don't, I've never seen I've never seen Natalie with the Bible. The um, <laughs> <Not> same. <laughs> <laughs> Memorized it when you were younger. <laughs> I'm going to say um, I'm going to say the third one. If you're bendy, that sounds like a one-handed press-up. Is that now or in the past? Um, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the bendy bit. That's. <laughs> we to do it now. Go on then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got my gym shorts on. <laughs> um, can you put Can you put your legs behind your head whilst you're walking on your hands? Yeah, so I go. I can put my leg round here and then walk on my hands, on the, or I can put my leg round there. <laughs> Ted, Ted, if you try it, Ted, we shall see that birthmark of the Nordschleifer. I'm just trying to imagine how you do that. How do you do that? Yeah. I'll show you at the next Grand Prix. Okay, all right. <laughs> that sounds um, very Cirque du Soleil, Nat, that one. Very, very good. I, I see a feature in Canada. Yeah. Nat goes to Cirque, yeah. to Cirque du Soleil coming up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I can sit Vegas now, yeah? All the Cirque du Soleil shows, pink them in the mirage. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Natalie, Martin, as we know, always very competitive, once stole a table tennis ball from a game of ping pong, but with who? The Kings of Leon, the Foo Fighters, or One Direction? Not a Scooby-Doo. The Kings of Leon. So they were, at, they were in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. The Foo, fight, Foo Fighters. Uh, who, was the, who was the third one? At one Direction. One, I think One Direction sounds like Nat's kind of social social activity. Couldn't steal a ping pong ball from Harry Styles. That just that would be wrong. <laughs> Besides, the half her age and it's barely a challenge. Nat, who was it? Kings of Leon. We played uh, together with them backstage, and I just loved the moment so much because they're probably my favourite band. That I snuck the ball into my pocket, and it still it's got K O L on the ball. I should have got that, shouldn't I? Because they were uh, yeah, they're in Abu Dhabi, weren't they? They were. They were it, was actually, it was actually the O2, though, that that happened. Right. Well, they're yeah. in Abu Dhabi, they were superb, but not playing ping pong because someone had nicked their ball. Um, <laughs> according, <laughs> according to the WhatsApp message I received yesterday morning, Natalie can deadlift 60, 80, or 100 kilos. Deadlift? Yeah. 60, 80, or 100 kilos. So I'm going to put Nats in about... 50 odd kilos so all of those are above her body weight mm -hmm. i'm gonna go 80 kilos which would natalie be the right answer, no the way. Right answer. excellent 80 kilos i know and um yeah we're yeah. pushing it i'm gonna go for the hundred i mean i don't know what it means in the whole scheme of things but you know it's good fun trying it means you need to yeah, get I mean, out <laughs> Well, I can't, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Good point, well made. Uh, true or false, Martin? As a 12-year-old girl at St Tracy's School for Naughty Children in Northampton, <laughs> Natalie was the star runner on the girls' relay team. True or false? Say that again, Crofty, because I just got a BBC news alert came up on my, on my <laughs> iPad here. Sorry. Anything interesting? Or, should we, <laughs> or is the question uh, no. <laughs> True or false? Uh, when she was at uh, St. Tracy's School for Naughty Children in Northampton, uh, Nats was 12 and was a star runner on the girls' relay team. Is that true or false? 
That's going to be true. I, I see. I see that as Nats all over, naughty and yeah, bit bit sharp on the running pitch, running field. Well, you'd think so, but Nats, what is the answer? Well, the right answer is that there's no school called St Tracy's, but that's fine. Well, not, not <laughs> I was actually on the boys' relay team because they didn't have a girls' relay team, and I really wanted to compete, so I cut my hair off and passed as a boy and they genuinely thought I was a boy <coughs> until did? we until we got to the national finals and I was caught going into the girls loo and we were disqualified uh, <laughs> oh slipped up there uh, Slip if I had a multiple up. choice I would have guessed that that Nats <laughs> would like to be a boy <laughs> I would. Bob. Exactly. So what's your name <laughs> Natalie oh I mean it's Natalie it's short, short well, for Bob it was just pink <laughs> 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 Yeah. I love it. I wasn't given that option. Final no. question. Final question, Martin. Why is it never a good idea to sleep in a hotel room next to Natalie? Uh, is it because she has the loudest snores ever that can wake the dead? Uh, she can't sleep unless she leaves the TV on at a very loud volume, or she's a prolific sleepwalker and often goes for a wander in the middle of the night? Uh, this is easy. Very easy one. She is a sleepwalker with some very scary stories to tell. <laughs> it is true. That's... I'll never forget um, waking up in Belgium and running down the corridor. This was in, uh, back in like 2011 and banging on all the doors and telling people that we, I had, to, we had to evacuate the hotel and Karun coming out and saying, no, everybody calm. <laughs> She's a sleepwalker and I <laughs> wandering around in complete days, not knowing what was going on. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, Nats, you have slept, walked your way into contention because at the end of that round, uh, Ted Kravitz, I make it that you've got eight points. Uh, Natalie, you've got 10 points out in the lead still, but only by two points. It's Martin Brunder with 12. And that brings us on, ladies and gentlemen, to our final round. And with the final round, we offer you double points. I don't know if that's oh. exciting or not, but I offer you double points. Uh, Ted, because you are trailing at the moment, you get the choice first. So would you like to go for, <laughs> that's the way I like it, what a joke, or two's company as your final questions? Stats the way I like it, what a joke, or two's company? Uh, I'll go with what a joke. What a joke. Yep. I'll give you the first line, you give me the punchline. Let's see if we can get these jokes sorted out. So you ready? What, that's the, that's the round, that's the quiz. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you've got okay. a complete joke. Because right. it's Brilliant. called what a joke, you see. Where do cows go on date night? The movies. The <laughs> movies, <Yeah. laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That could be a winning line. <laughs> what do you call bears without any ears? Uh, burrs. Nope. Bees. Well, yeah, well I, it's a burr, isn't it? A burr. Because <laughs> they haven't got any ears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think he, he kind of he got the point of that. Yeah, yeah, he got, kind of yeah but I didn't get the right. No. We'll give it you, Ted. We'll give it you. You're not, going not. through the final, Ted, with this. Yeah. So, hardly Magnus Magnuson stuff, is it? But yeah, carry, carry, carry on. If Magnus Magnuson did stand up, this would be it, right? <laughs> okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? No, cows go moo. <laughs> See, he knows all the answers. I love I it. I've got <laughs> seven year old kids. Sorry, yeah, I haven't even got that excuse. Uh, why are fish so smart? Um, uh, because they don't they don't get eaten by sharks. I don't know. No, no, I don't know. Nats, just for the fun of it. Sorry? They wear tails? No. They have tails? Because like, they live, they they live in schools. No. What? Because they live in schools. Why does that make them smart? Oh, clever! I thought you meant smart as in well dressed. Smart. <laughs> okay. see, see, the homeschooling's going well for you too. Ken. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And finally, in this round, Ted, yep. why did the pirate become an opera singer? Because you know me, there's got to be a pirate gag in there somewhere. Um, uh, because of the high seas. 
<laughs> exactly. He wanted to hit the uh, high seas. High seas. <laughs> Very good, Ted. Good round, Ted Kravitz. I think you might have aced it there, Ted Osh. Oh, what no. a joke. That's good. Uh, Nat, you're in second place. So you get uh, two's company or stats the way I like it. Uh, stats the way I like it. Stats the way I like it. This is all sporting statistics. See how you get on with this. True or false? Crystal Palace manager Roy Hodgson is older than Real Madrid's Bernabeu Stadium. False. No, it's true. What? Roy was born 127 days before the stadium. <laughs> I thought you were say 127 years ago. <laughs> oh, yes, he is that old. Wow, <laughs> or is it just his tactics? Great, that's a great stat. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to use that tonight. Brilliant. You can dine out on this round forever. I will, well, thank you. Yeah. When you're allowed to dine out again. Right. Which famous pair of sporting superstars? have sons who share the exact same age gap between the days that they were born that the sporting superstars do. Is it Messi and Ronaldo, Johnny Wilkinson and Brian O'Driscoll, or Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Basically, they definitely were born... Not, it's definitely not Wilkinson and O'Driscoll. They were born a certain amount of days apart, and so were their sons. Yeah, definitely not the rugby players. Uh -huh. um, what were the oh Messi and Ronaldo? Yeah, or Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I watched the last one last night. How good was it? Have you yeah, seen brilliant. it? Oh. So I saw his two sons in that, but I don't know what the, the other son, how old they are. Messi, I don't know, Messi's kids. I'm gonna go Messi and Ronaldo. And you would be absolutely correct with no. Messi and Ronaldo. Uh, 869 days apart, uh, they were born, um, just as Cristiano Jr. and Thiago were as well. Right, question number three. Sachin Tendulkar, Brian Lara and Kumar Sangakkara all share which sporting stat? Uh, did they score a century on their debuts? Did they take exactly the same amount of innings to reach 10,000 test runs? Or have they all scored over 300 runs in an innings five times. Ooh. Not the second one. Legends of the game. Tendulkar, Lara, Sangakkara. What was the, what was the first answer? They, did they score a century on their debuts? Did they take exactly the same amount of innings to reach 10,000 test runs? Or have they scored over 300 runs in an innings five times? I'm going to go century on their debut. Yeah, they took exactly the same amount of innings to score 10,000 runs, 195 innings in total. Wow. Yeah, you see, no, that's another the way I like it. I'm going to write these down. George, you can dine out on this forever. Roger Federer has won more than 100 titles in his career, but in 2004, 2006 and 2007, he won three Grand Slam titles in a single year. True or false? 2004, 2000 and... Six. Six in 2007. Yep. He won three Grand Slam titles in a single year. True or false? See, I think they're harder, these 50-50 chances, aren't they? More pressure. Harder. I can say false. I see, it's true. Ah! He's the ah. only player in men's singles history to achieve that as well. And finally, because... Wow, the running. You're taking a dive here, Pinkham. <laughs> <laughs> this is very suspicious. When is the final? <laughs> uh, don't you worry about that, Mars. Busy that. Read up your diary. Um, <laughs> Dars legend Phil the Power Taylor has hit a staggering 22 nine dart legs in his career. But how many of these were on TV in televised events? Was it four, seven, 11, or 18? Oh, there's four there. That's unfair. Thanks, MB. Thank you. All right. Was it seven, 11, or 18? Uh, <laughs> I'll so go 11. I don't know. 11. You go, go 11? You mean the 2002 World Match Play, 2004 UK Open, 05 UK Open, 07 IDL and UK Open, 08 UK Open, twice in the Premier League in 2010. Uh, in 2012, Martin Brunner, the Premier League, you were there to witness it. 2014 World Match Play, 2015 Sydney Darts Masters, that would be 11, Natalie Pinker. Ah. Mm. Well done to you. you Which that means... that <laughs> right, for, so Martin, you need two correct to go through to the grand final. And what's my topic? 
and your topic is two's company. So you need to, and this is all about twos, duos. Um, they've been a duo since 1988, starting out in children's TV and now on prime time. Uh, they've won a total of 36 national television awards. They've both got an OBE. Who are they? Oh, come on. It's Phil and um, Holly Willoughby. <laughs> oh. oh, no, hang on. Hang on. We're we talking about Ant and Deck. Sorry, we're we talking about Ant and Deck. Do right. you say breakfast TV? I didn't. I or said prime time else? TV. I said prime time. Oh, sorry. Ant and Deck. Well, it is Ant and Deck, yes. I so, thought you said breakfast TV, sorry. No, no worries at all. It is Ant and Deck. But does uh, he get that point or not? Well, I don't know. Yeah, he gets that. I think he gets you, that. You <laughs> want him to get it, don't you, Ted? No, no, I, I, no because you, with the best will in the world, um, for, to Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, uh, ITV's This Morning couldn't really be called primetime. And... Uh, no, it's my fault. I wasn't, I wasn't actually listening. Yeah. So, and you it, cut out. Do they both have OBEs as well? Do Phil and Holly have OBEs? This is basically your life with Crofty. You just tune yeah. out, don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I tuned out a while ago. You just talk amongst yourselves for a while. Um, so, Martin, uh, one to tie, two to win from here on in, because I forgot Ted had such a storming round last time, round, uh, last time out. So, question number two. Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon teamed up in the 1991 movie about two friends who go on a road trip, which ends badly. What's the name of the film? Oh, God, what's that called? Um, oh. See, it's only easy, Nats, when you know it. And I, I know you what's know. What's the name? Don't I get multiple choices? No, not for this one. Um, uh, I've forgotten, actually. I know, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I've had too many hits on the head. Um, um, so did they, though, it? to be fair. The two girls on the road trip go over the edge of a cliff. Um, I uh, can't think of it, sorry. I can't think of it either. Can I steal it? No. You can answer it though. Elmer and Louise! Elmer and Louise. Ah, that's it. What a classic. Created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera in 1940, they were first called Jasper and Jinx. They appeared in over 160 different shorts. Following that, how are they better known? Different shorts? Yeah, as in kind of short movies. Yeah. Short movies. Yeah. Hannah and Jinx. They were called they were called Jasper and Jinx. They were created uh, by William Hannah and Joseph Barbera. Yeah. Um, what were they called? The two guys. It's not two guys. Oh, it's, two... A cat, it's a cat and a mouse. Oh, uh, Tom, it's yeah, it's thanks, Ted. Tom and Jerry, you really don't want to go through the fire. <laughs> oh, Tom, Tom and Jerry. And Jerry, correct. Yes. Moving you into a tie. So you now have two <laughs> opportunities to dive or drive through. I think this is fascinating because this is a true insight into your soul, Martin. Will your competitive juices just overflow and prevent you from getting these wrong? Or... <laughs> Or oh. are you going to take one and fall on your sword and dip out of this because you want a free week? <laughs> you know me. You know I'm so competitive. So <laughs> you know the answer to that. You're too competitive. Honestly, you but this. even the fact that it's 35 degrees and sunny in Norfolk this week is not going yeah, to stop. Yeah, I know. To and I want to, I want to, yeah, do some things. So we're um, allowed to do things, aren't we, now? Yeah. Are we well, you, you can go out and sunbathe. In your you house. Yeah. You can go out and sunbathe. Mm -hmm. Now, originally, they were called Tom and Jerry. They sold over 100 million records and were one of the best-selling music groups of the 1960s. But who are they? Ooh. See what I did there, Nats? Tom and Jerry, and then a... I don't, get any, I don't get any multiple choice in my, in my section. It's true, you don't. You don't get a point for that observation either, but you're correct. Um, is it Mungo Jerry? No. It's a duo. Nats. Oh, I was going to say um, Jerry and the Pacemakers. Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and question number five. French, <laughs> you're going to love this. French electronic music duo formed in Paris in 1993 by uh, Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo and Thomas Bangalter. He's never going to get that. that wrong. What are they better known as? And they've been to Formula One Grand Prix. Ted, WhatsApp him quick. 
can I? Out of this final, what's happened? The answer right now. You need this to win, otherwise yeah. we go to a tie break. This could not uh, be. This could not be more gripping. I give you a clue. I don't even. I don't even understand the question, let alone the answer. You do. You do. You do. They were in Monaco down the pit lane, wearing yeah. the funky. What you say there, Daft Punk, Ted? Have you got? What? I didn't say anything. What Daft Punk. Ladies and gentlemen, famed for his knowledge of 1993 electronic music from France, it is Daft Punk! Oh, well done. <laughs> oh, what Not an end. <laughs> and what's doubly embarrassing, I've still never heard of them. <laughs> yes, you have. Of course you have. You've just got it right. Well done. Uh. <laughs> You he might got, not have heard of him, Martin Brundle. Crofty, he got lucky. You could say he got lucky. Oh, he nice. Did get lucky. Yeah. Very good, good Ted. There. You might not have heard of him, but that answer has taken you through to our grand final. Absolutely magnificent. Uh, the final scores Natalie Pinkham, 14 points. Ted Kravitz, 16 points. Martin Brundle, 18 points. Yay. He stands on top of our podium today. Um, <laughs> by virtue of the fact that Ted is busier later in this week than you are. <laughs> Martin, you're daft and he's a punk. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, that's what made me think of the answer. <laughs> oh, magnificent. Um, so, uh, you will join Craig Slater in our final. He's already gone And through. Karun Chandok. Karun's well, bound to win the other one, isn't he? Because he, yeah. he's a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, Karun appears in the win. Karun has not had his uh, not had his heat yet, so uh, he might be ousted by Simon Lazenby uh, or Jensen Button, and that pig that's currently walking around my garden might be hovering uh, later on as well. You never know. Uh, we, Martin, we were doing the Mon we were doing the Monday podcast, and Simon and Jensen agreed they were going to cheat like crazy. So, um, yeah, you're right. Karun's got his hand his his hand his work cut out there. That they are going to work together. I love the fact that it's so important we're already talking about cheating. Uh, Nats and Ted, well done today. Martin, well done, everyone. congratulations. Well done, Crofty. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Very good. Very Thanks good for stuff. taking part. Thank you for watching as well. Two down, two to go before our grand final. Uh, we'll be back with another episode soon. Stay safe. Take care.